um, we're talking about navigating crisis and seeking solutions. Another crisis in the story that has to be told is the biodiversity crisis, right? We talk about that a lot. Some of the work that Professor Scully does here is oyster and oyster restorations, so endangered, not an endangered species necessarily, but they're certainly endangered populations and places. Um, we may be in the midst of the sixth extinction. How many in the room have heard of the sixth extinction? Okay. This is prompted by human development. It's prompted by climate change. The Brazilian rainforest may be on the verge of or past a series of tipping points. As I mentioned earlier, we're dedicating our gathering today and so much more to our friend Tom Lovejoy. For those of you who didn't know Tom, and many of us had the privilege of knowing him, he spent more than 50 years, here you see him in his Camp 41, more than 50 years researching, working, and advocating to protect the rainforest, and he succeeded to a very large extent. He led an extraordinary Planet Forward storytelling expedition to his research station, Camp 41, a few years ago. He's taken all kinds of people there to see and to relay what they've learned. He's brought scientists, movie stars, politicians, journalists, students, so they can tell the story. Like grad filmmaking student Jamie Dittmar, who traveled with us. I'm going to show you her video here to Tom Lovejoy, starring Tom Lovejoy, starring his rainforest followed by some others who were with us and were deeply affected, and some of them who are in this room with us today. Here's Jamie's piece from Camp 41 with Tom. How do we actually protect the biology of a living planet so that it's there hundreds and thousands of years from now? Let's stop thinking about nature as some little patch of protected area in the middle of a human-dominated system. Let's start thinking about human aspiration embedded in natural landscapes. So we're at Camp 41, which is to my mind, the best of the research camps we have here in the heart of the Amazon. And that's because it's virtually unbroken forest from here all the way to the Guianas, essentially the forest primeval. Biological diversity is the priority in how I look at the whole picture. It's incontrovertibly led to a priority in protecting large areas and connecting small areas that are now isolated. And just to sum it up with a single example from this project, 100 hectares of forest, if it's a fragment, it loses half of the species of the birds of the forest in less than 15 years. So you may have a forest but it doesn't have all the things that it had originally. So what this means is if you want to have all that diversity in the Amazon basin, you actually need to manage it as a system so that it can generate the rainfall that's essential to have a rainforest. Moisture gets returned to the moving air mass through evaporation of the complex surfaces of the forest and through the action of transpiration through the leaves. That process repeats itself five or six times so finally it gets the, to the high wall of the Andes and the air mass moves up and most of that moisture drops out in, in a tremendous amount of rain and creates essentially the 20 percent of the world's river water that is the Amazon system. But it's not just about science here it's also about building the next generation of scientists. There is no better classroom than the reality of being in the heart of the living planet. And they get it. When I think of Tom Lovejoy, I think of someone who was so willing and passionate to share his life's work. 
I remember we would go on these hour, two hour long walks through the Amazon at Camp 41. And every once in a while we'd stop and we'd look at different plants or we'd see the monkeys jumping around in the trees or we'd see a project that he was working on. And just his patience and willingness to share all his knowledge was something that I really admired. And you could really tell that he was passionate about sharing what he knew. Hi, my name is Tomek Falkowski. I am now an assistant professor in the Department of Forestry at New Mexico Highlands University. And, and going to Camp 41 was an experience that allowed me to have this visceral understanding of biodiversity at a scale that I had never experienced before. I mean, we're talking about one of the most biodiverse places in the world, uh, being the, the Amazon rainforest. Hello, my name is Harrison Watson. I am a third year PhD candidate in ecology and evolutionary biology at Princeton University. And in reflecting on my many experiences with Tom and my exceptional experience at Camp 41, I think that among the many other things that that trip did for me, uh, the experience and, and the exposure that I had to the one-of-a-kind community or series of communities that, you know, call Camp 41 home has really set me or, or really set me on the path towards a career in academia, though it's still very early on, obviously. Um, and I have a lot to thank for Tom in that regard. So Tom was a scientist, he was an advocate, and he was a storyteller. And he could explain science in ways that we could understand. And you take that, and as you saw with Jamie's piece, put these pictures to it, put this video to it, bring in music, show us what we're talking about. Don't just tell us, show us. And that's very powerful. And that's what Tom did, it's what Jamie did. And it's something to think about. How do you show people not just tell people what you care about, what you're thinking about, what you're talking about, the story.